Mike, what do you what do you take away from a game like that, and obviously the outcome like that for? Yeah, you know, uh, I want to watch it. I think they. They beat up on us pretty good there for a little while, and then our guys kept fighting. I think I think we fought through everything, so that's my first takeaway. Um, but they pushed us out early, um, and the guys stayed with it and uh, and gave effort the whole time. So I was um, happy with the effort, um, not happy with the result. Uh, you're obviously facing these challenges toward the end of the season. Does your uh, philosophy as a head coach change, especially knowing group that you have is so young and so is there more teaching is there more learnings for the group that you perhaps would be giving as a head coach there's there's probably been more opportunities to teach with some of the young guys one-on-one -on -one. Mm -hmm. um but our our trainings haven't really changed i mean uh other than less contact um and less players there but uh so somewhat, you know, and I think it's been like really good opportunities. I haven't watched Anzac's minutes, but Anzac was really good tonight. Luke Rosendale makes a mistake, sits down, comes back, and, and plays well throughout the fourth quarter. Owen Foxwell, I could put in that same boat. So, uh, you know, there's, there's great learning opportunities for all of our guys, but the young guys especially. Reese, how are you approaching these ones? Obviously, knowing that high minutes guys are out. So you get more basketball opportunity, but you're also one of the older guys in this playing group right now. How are you approaching these games? Um, pretty much the same way I approach it every game, to be honest. I uh, don't go into the, a game, as, like, I go into every game assuming I'm going to play as, yeah, play big minutes. But um, I think there's definitely more of a, a leadership role with the older guys like myself, Gorjok, Benny, Abdul and all those guys just to sort of like, because we young guys are super emotional and just keeping everyone in line sort of thing. But credit to them today, they were the one keeping us in line sometimes and, and I think it was just a shared effort. And yeah, all in all, I think pretty much go about it the same way but with a little bit more effort, emphasis on leadership. How is the playing group sort of keeping upbeat with some of the losses that, that you guys are, are packing on? I mean, as, as upsetting as been losing a lot of games, the group loves each other. Like we get around each other a lot, which is, is really rare, um, especially in teams I've been a part of in the past. This group just genuinely loves each other and loves each other's company. So you can see that on the court a little bit, like when guys are falling down, we're picking each other up, even if we're down 20 or 30 points, like it's always the same. So the level's been high, it's just been, we're, sh we're sharing that disappointment of the losses, but we're not going against each other at all. Mike, what have you made of the improvement that Gorjok has shown, especially the last month with this with more opportunity? I, th I think the really the only thing that's held Gorjak back is his health this year. He missed a, a big piece of um, the first part of the season with a calf. Um, then he was out for three weeks. He's starting to get back into playing basketball. Um, guys got to play to to feel good about themselves and feel comfortable. They need reps. Um, so I think that's that's what it is. Um, I've loved Gorjak for the last 10 years as a player. And I think when he's had opportunities, he's been pretty good. And uh, when he's healthy. And, and I think health is the first thing that helps you be yourself. And, and down the stretch of this season, you know, tonight and the last few games as well, you're obviously spending a lot of time looking at some of the young guys who are getting more opportunity. What's your process, like you and Tommy, in terms of assessing who deserves another shot next year? Who do you want to bring back? What are you looking for out of, out of these guys during these last few weeks? I have, I mean, that goes through your mind because at this time of the season, especially guys who are on contract or not on contract, um, you're thinking through your roster continually. Um, but I, I really have been focused on trying to win this game against Melbourne United. And I, you know, if, if Ben Ayer, ben Ayer hits four threes like he did last week, and Cody Stapman hits three or four threes, and Reese Vag hits three or four threes. We're in there with a chance, you know? Um, playing the way they've been playing. They've been playing well, and they've been playing hard, um, but we need to make shots, and we need to stay out of foul trouble. Um, I can throw Ruben in there and Abdul Nader. We needed to shoot well today. We needed to attack the paint, kick it out, make shots. We didn't do that. Um, so I'm, I'm really just... Um, 
uh, assessing the guys like I normally would right now, but I think it all goes into the the bank for for next year's roster. Have you got any early indication on Foxy's ankle? No, no. Uh, Mike uh, Abdul uh, produced a good performance, even if it was a quick performance. Um, how did you uh, assess his game, and also how did you assess, I suppose, um, the fouling? situation because he wasn't happy with the, the last foul touch on uh, Krebs I think it was. Yeah. You know I, I don't I don't know about the fouls. Um, uh, James said he grabbed his singlet, so that's pretty much automatic if you grab someone's shirt. So that's all I heard. I didn't see the play. Um, yeah, I think uh, Abdul's it was just we're down 25 or whatever, and he fouls out and gets a tech, and and I was happy that he got 18 minutes in because it's been a really rough year for him and uh, and I think for us in some respects. So uh, he had a, he had a day of practice where he felt like himself a little bit and uh, had a big smile on his face. So it's a step in the right direction, but um, I know he can play a lot better than he played tonight. So, uh, so I'm hopeful he will in the next couple of weeks. What's the early feel on Mitch and uh, Kenny and Gary for the next game? You know what? I've been really, uh, you know, if I was a gambler, I would have lost a lot of money this year. So I don't want to predict which guys will play. But, but they're all making really good progress. So I'm hopeful on all of them. Um, yeah, I hope, you know, I don't think Al can get up after his surgery, but I, I'm hopeful for the rest, like, optimistic. Thanks, guys.